Hey, all let's spend a few minutes and talk about best practices repairing corrupt AutoCAD files. So this is something that's a little bit uh, near and dear to my heart. I used to work at Autodesk in, my, in the past, and there used to be drawing corruption cases that we would have submitted and learned a lot of the ins and outs. So I want to share that all with you so you all know how to think through these issues. Okay, today's agenda, corruption. Not the prettiest of topics. It's not, no one wants to deal with corruption. But as a CAD designer, you are going to have this issue come up. You are going to deal with corruption at some point. So it's important to have a foundation of understanding of what it is, where it can possibly come from. It's hard, very hard to trace it. And what are the practices to fix it? So what is corruption and how do I identify it? I define corruption as an unexpected reaction to a command in a CAD file. So I have done this command before. Let's pick something super simple. I'm drawing a polyline. I cannot draw a polyline in this file. I know I, I know how to draw a polyline. I've done them in other files. That is a drawing corruption file specific issue. So now this is your process to test. And it's always good to grab a fresh install from manage.autodesk.com because that's what we can rely on. So this is, why I would, this is my, always my process is, okay, this isn't working in this file. Let's crack open a civil tutorial file. They come with an install on your machine. And can I do the same thing in that file? Can I open up a blank NCS template file and draw a polyline? And uh, so it's just important to establish, is it just happening in this file or is it happening to all files on my, on my machine? Because all files indicates a larger issue versus just a drawing corruption issue. And that's a big crossroads and you, want, you don't want to go down the wrong rabbit hole. So dependent to a specific file with multiple users on the same build experiencing. So say you want to verify that you, it's not just you having it, have your coworker on the same build. So like around 2023, have him test it on 2023. Can you do this? Can you see this happen? Um, if he if he sees the issue, then it further indicates that it's a drawing corruption issue. And the next thing we're going to talk about is process to resolve and prevent. So I'm going to sprinkle in some prevention measures as we go ahead and uh, simulate resolving a potentially corrupt file. So process to resolve. There's a three-step process that I that I like to work through whenever I'm fixing a CAD file. So step one is we're repairing the data within that drawing file. So we're going to fix that data. Some of the commands that, uh, that, that are used for this are recover, cover all, audit, purge, dash purge, dash purge, purge all. Um, all those commands fix data in that file. If that doesn't resolve, then we go to option two. And that's extracting the data to a new file. So we're taking all the data out of one file and putting it in a new file. The two commands for that are, one, one, one of my personal favorites is W block. We W block grab all the data, create that new block file. Second one is copy, copy paste. So we grab it set, it, set a base point, put it in the same spot in the new file. And then there's a couple nuances of that. So we're gonna talk about that, you know, how to step two, what's the best way to do step two? Cause there's a lot of hiccups you can, that can happen with that. Step three, export the data. So take the data and export it out of the file. So, and, you know, as you go down this list here, one's going to be the least destructive, and then three, you're probably going to have some data loss. So just keep that in mind that it's, you know, if, if things resolve quicker rather than later, that's a, that's a good sign for your data. All right, so let's jump into CAD here. So we're going to pretend we have a corrupt drawing file, and we are going to, let's, let's uh, do some repair techniques. So file opens or doesn't open. That's kind of one of the big crossroads. But this, let's just start with, let's say it doesn't open. So up top left here, you go down, we hit this recover button right here. Repair a damaged drawing file. So we hit that button and it's gonna ask us which file do we wanna select. So let's select this quarter 5C, which is the tutorial file, and we are going to recover it. So we select it and we say open. And what that does is it basically just runs an audit on the file while opening it. And this is a great technique if you, to prevent corruption. So, you know, on Mondays, I get into work, we're gonna recover, save the file, you're off and running, it just ran a check on it. And, uh, you know, odds are, it probably won't fix anything if you're running on, recovers and audits uh, fairly frequently, but just because you checked the object and it didn't tell you it fixed anything, doesn't mean it did some, didn't do something on the background. I've seen enough times where I've run an audit, no errors fixed, and voila, uh, it's working again. 
So keep in mind, errors don't necessarily, if you don't have errors, it doesn't mean that your files are always perfectly clean. It's always a good idea to try and keep, uh, stay on this. So we say no errors were covered in the database, and now the file opens up for us. Now, there's another, the other step you could do is do a recover all. So and that's, uh, so you type recover all, recover all, and recovery options will be formed on the selected drawing file and all attached extracts. If you do not want to update the drawing file format to the custom objects, locate and rename an existing backup file instead. So you can recover all the drawing files. So like if you have extracts attached, you can recover those all in one step. So let's pretend that we recovered the file and it opened. So now that the file opened, you can, um, look, now, now what are the techniques to repair data within that drawing? So first thing I always do, audit. Audit is your friend. And you should be doing it a lot if you have drawing corruption. So audit, A-U-D-I-T, fix any errors, yes. Okay, it's gonna do a pass through, it's gonna check all the objects. Okay, no errors fixed. Now we save it, control S. The next thing I do is do a purge, okay? Or I'm sorry, excuse me, dash purge. And you should test, you know, after each one of these. Um, so, like, probably run an audit, dash purge, and then test. So, on a dash purge, and now R, we're going to remove those regapps. And a regapp is a registered application. And verify each name to be purged. Nope. And you can see 15 registered applications removed. That's expected. So, CAT runs on registered applications. The problem is when there's a lot of them in a file. So... 150 is about the max for CAD. If you have 500, 1,000, that's getting somewhat up there. If you have 20,000, that's a lot. I think the most I've ever seen is 600,000 in a file. And that's going to impact performance in pretty much any faucet of using Civil 3D. So keep in mind, get those get those regapps out of there. The other thing with regapps is they will propagate to every file it touches. So the XRAPs are going to have the same number of regapps in them as, you know, say, the master file. There is a regapp cleanup utility on the Autodesk site, so you can do them all at the same time. But keep in mind, if you have regapps in one, you probably have them in all, and it can be a bit gnarly to you know, get those out. Uh, where do they come from? Uh, I've seen them come from, you know, most common thing I think I've seen them come from is like a surveyor gives you a file, comes from out of house. Um, they have some sort of extensions on there for CAD, and that's where I've seen them come in. And, you know, then you get the file given to you, you're off and running, you attach it as an XREP, and then the thing just, and it's into all your files. So it's always a good idea to check files when they come from out of house. Okay, so we ran an audit, we ran a, a dash purge, and got rid of the red jabs. It's good, so always save things a lot. I usually run an audit after running a, um, a dash purge or a purge. Just keep running those audits, and then keep testing. Uh, you know, it's, it's, it's not a bad thing to keep doing it. So... Audit dash purge. Next thing you can do is you can run a purge. I do this a little sparingly just because you're going to be removing your unused data and you might, you know, you might want it at some point. But you know, you know, things happen and you do need to get rid of them. So there's nothing to purge out of this file, but you just do purge all and get everything out of there. Okay, close this. So we've run an audit, a dash purge, and a purge. And let's see, is there anything else? Um, that's pretty much all you can do within the drawing file. You can do a save as and try and delineate corruption, give it a different drawing name. Uh, the other thing you can do within the drawing file is you can try and isolate if there's anything that's corrupt specific objects. So if we see, we zoom out here, you can see we have a few different objects, but you know, one thing I do is I'll just select everything, do a save as, give the thing a new name, select everything, delete it out, then see if your command works, because then you'll know if it's an object or not. This could be a bit tedious because then you end up going into every object, so to speak. So cast the wide net, delete everything out. Okay, it worked. Then you know it's one of those corrupt objects that's visible. And then next thing you do is you just do process of elimination and say, all right, if I get rid of my profile views, what happens? Does it work? Okay, maybe it's my profile views and then you just keep on drilling in. So, and there's not really any specific objects that cause corruption. Uh, for some reason, I sometimes see hatch causing it, especially extensive amounts of hatch. So, you know, pay attention to that. But for the most part, it could be any object in your file. But you can go down the route of deleting things singularly and then just, you know, and then rebuilding those, those objects. So, okay, 
that is repairing the data within the file. So now let's talk about getting the data out of that file and into a new file. So we have this corridor 5C file here. Now we're going to do those two steps, those two different methods, the copy paste and the W block. So first one, W block. Uh, type lay on on the command line. So we're going to turn all our layers on. And then type lay thaw. L-A-Y-T-H-W. And I usually do it twice because sometimes I found it doesn't, sometimes uh, sometimes it won't, you know, sometimes it'll, it'll have a hiccup. So lay on, lay thaw again. Okay, so now we have everything visible. Double click the command, double click your mouse wheel to, to a zoom extent. We can see these are all our objects in our file. And then I usually zoom out a little bit here and then I'll run my W block command. So this is the right block dialog, dialog box. So source, we're going to say objects. One thing is you can do the entire drawing and say, OK, here, I'd advise against that because you might have something way out, you know, a hidden object way out in the middle of nowhere that will bring the corruption with you. So and that's not important to your design, too. So let's just bring the let's just bring our objects with us. So we grab our objects and then we select objects right here. You can leave it as retain or convert to block and explode it afterwards. Uh, I always leave it to retain, and I find that works that, that works well for me. So we select our objects right here. And we know everything's visible because we already did the zoom extent when we turn all our layers on. We do a window select here, and we say enter. See, there's 49 objects selected. File name, it's just going to be a new block, dwg to our downloads folder. And then our units are feet. So we say OK. And we have a copy there, we're just going to replace it. Include the AutoCAD map information, yes. OK, so now we've made that new block. Let's go ahead and open it up. That's in our Downloads folder. All right, and then my new block, where did you go? New block right here. Okay, let's go ahead and open that up. So there's two different ways you could start with it. You could run a recover on the file when you open it that first time. In this instance, we didn't, but that's also another solution as well to you know try and do different different ways to work with it. Okay, so we open this file up. Let's run an audit first. Fix those errors. You say yes. Then you do a dash purge, a purge, the same thing we just did in step one in terms of fixing the data within that file. So and then, then just keep testing things. Do a save as, maybe give it a different name. Uh, you're going to want to bring your layouts in. If you have layouts, those don't come across with W block. I have a video in the uh, link to this uh, to this YouTube video for bringing your layouts through the AD Design Center. So, but keep in mind, now go proceed through the steps to fix the data within that file. So what we did in step two is we grabbed the data and pulled it out with the W block command. And uh, so that, and then we, and then we clean the data with that new file, and then we proceed to keep testing our whatever our corruption issue was. So, part B of step two is the copy paste. So, let's assume that if you want to do the same thing. You do that lay on, lay thaw, zoom extent, get everything in view, and then um, so for this we already have it. So let's just proceed with the copy paste. So we we'll go let's do a window select, clipboard. Copy with base point. And then I always make my base point 000. zero, zero. So we selected all our objects. And now we're going to go to our new file here. And we clipboard. And then we paste. And then it's going to say specify insertion point 0, 0, 0, 0. And then give it a second here. And do a zoom extent. And now we've copy and pasted our objects out. Then you proceed to do the same thing. Step one: audit, purge, dash purge, uh, purge all, all those, all those steps to uh, remove data. Uh, with these, I would say the W block is generally the most um, successful in terms of this copy paste. Uh, it can work. I have seen it. I have seen copy paste work where W block didn't. So uh, that's why I'm not ruling this as a solution out. But I would lean on the W block. Uh, definitely more so. That's definitely my favorite. It definitely fixes a lot of data. And it also maintains everything too. So, um, you know, you're not giving a bad answer and you're not, you know, you're not, you're not losing data on, on your end either, which is, which is definitely the worst case scenario. 
Okay, option three, exporting the data. So this is the most destructive, and so, but it doesn't bring across any corruption. And I don't think I've ever seen XML bring across corruption. Uh, maybe one time it did something weird, but just keep in mind, XML is very bomb-proof in terms of being a clean source of just getting whatever is clean out of a file into the into an XML format so you can import it into a new file. So, output. And you can notice here we have a, you know, so it's always a good idea to take a check before you export to LAN XML, just so, and if you know, you know, but uh, what's in my file that, uh, and, you know, what, what was lost, so you know. So you can see we have, you know, five surfaces, we have an alignment, uh, let's see, we have one, two, three alignments, and we have a corridor down here, an assembly. So let's go ahead and kick this out to LAN XML. So output tab, export to LAN XML, and we're going to check everything. So you can see there's our corridor. Here's our nuts on our site. Here's our alignments right here. And our center line left, right. Profiles. And there's our five circuits. We say OK. And then we kick this out to our downloads. So yes. So now we've created an XML file for our AEC objects. One downside to XML is it only grabs civil objects, alignments, profiles, uh, corridors, well, we're going to see that in a second. And uh, so only that data is what travels. So there's no, you know, a line's not going to travel with an XML. So we have our new file here. That's it. Okay, so now let's use the command line to import it in. So you can use the command line or the output tab. Or the insert tab, actually, excuse me. So land XML in. And now we are going to go to our corridor 5C right here. This is what we just kicked out. Okay, so one thing you'll notice right here is our corridor did not make the trip. Our assembly did not make the trip. Corridors don't make the trip. Uh, a corridor surface will make the trip. So keep in mind that some things don't travel with an XML too. You have to rebuild them. I understand the frustration, but this is a clean source of getting data out. So you will notice with the alignments, it does bring the profile along with it. So you, know, you don't have to rebuild the whole profile, which is nice. So, say OK. And now we've imported our XML data in. So we kicked it out from our curve file and brought it in. Uh, this is definitely the most drastic and the, um, you know, the, least, the least friendly in terms of losing data. So just to sum things up, uh, option one, repairing the data within the file. So that's the purge, audit, dash purge, purge all. All those commands, save as, saving, uh, that all is repairing the file within, repairing the data within that file. And then keep testing it as you, um, as you do things. So like, you know, run an audit, test it, you know, keep, make sure to be testing frequently. Second thing is taking the data out of the file and putting it in a new file. That's with the W block or the copy, copy with base point. And then proceed to do step one once you get into that new file. So that would be that, you know, the audits, all, all those commands we just talked about. And then step three would be exporting it to land XML. And so that would be kicking your data out to a that XML file and importing it in. Definitely the most destructive. And then I'd say there's one last thing you could do. This one is this one's a little bit of a backdoor way in. And yep, it would be get on a different version of CAD. So generally speaking with CAD, the newer the version, the faster it's gonna run. And the faster it's gonna run, the potential to find corruption. So it's rare. That you, you don't see corruption happen in a previous files. You see it happen in newer files. Our files in 2018, we went to 2019. You know, this no longer works. So what you could do, and I definitely advise with caution with this, you know, work with copies. But if you've been to 2019 and you're seeing the issue, do a save as on the file, open it up in 2018 and try and fix these same steps in 18 and see if you can get back to 19 with it. Um, not, doesn't always work, but sometimes if you have issues with files, say the file doesn't open in 2019, you can get it in 2018 open it up, run it on it, fix the error, save it, and get back to 2019. Uh, things like that you can do. So, and that, that's, uh, you know, that, that, that's a little bit of a backdoor way that I've, you know, kind of worked with things as well. So those three things are going to be your best friend in terms of fixing files, you know, within the file, getting data out of the file, and then exporting the data. So I appreciate your time, and uh, thank you for, uh, thank you for tuning in.